that you're really close to who voted to leave the EU? And I mean close, not just someone you know a little bit. Yeah, I've got friends. I've got very close friends who voted leave. So what do they think of you now? Well, some... They need to overturn their decision thinking they didn't quite understand it last time. No, I think, I think they understand that democracy is... It's a process, it's a debate, you carry on arguing. <coughs> Excuse me, I mean, a friend of mine, you know, I've got lots of friends in Burnley, and Burn Burnley voted leave by a very considerable majority. But actually, two of the guys who were on the, one of the videos yesterday, they were Burnley fans who came up to me at a recent match calling for a people's vote. I think this idea, I think there are Remainers, who, as you say, saying, get on with it. I think there are an awful lot of leavers who are actually saying, this is not the Brexit we voted for. I don't see how, if you vote, if you're a Tory MP, like the minister, Ms. Mrs. Braverman, who we've just heard just now, if you're a Tory MP who really believes in Brexit, you can't vote for Chequers. You can't vote for this plan that Theresa May is doing because it's it's not Brexit. I can't, I couldn't support it I mean, because problems, I think it's going to damage the future of the country. One of the problems you've got is if you are going to have any realistic chance of a second referendum, really, mm -hmm. you need Jeremy Corbyn on side. Where was he yesterday? He was apparently at some event to do with Pinochet. I don't know. But, I mean, I, look, you're absolutely right. But look what happened at the Labour Party conference. But Jeremy Corbyn Through... has made no indication I... that he is going to support a second referendum. Thus far. You see, and there's, there's something else that, that somebody said, there's a Tory MP, amongst the many horrible things that are being said about her by her colleagues in the press, somebody quoted Michel Barnier, and this I'm sure will rile the Brexit extremists, but Michel Barnier apparently says that the way that he's come across Theresa May is she says no until she says yes. We had the same on the snap election. I think, look, politicians do respond to pressure. It's why the purpose of yesterday's march, it wasn't just to have a march. Does that just... frustrate you, though, that Jeremy Corbyn is not... Surprised? Yes! Yes, of course it does. And it frustrated me during the campaign. Do you think it's because he's a Eurosceptic? I think partly it's that. I think historically he's not been a big fan of the European Union. But listen, the other thing I think that Labour members and Labour MPs need to understand, look at who is pushing hardest for this Brexit now. It's the right wing of the Conservative Party. It's Rees Mogg. Well, it's, it's not Johnson. just. It's not just. It, it is it was a caricature to no, it's not. Justice, look at Jacob Rees Mogg. No, look at the it? people. Who, who, will, who are the first in the queue to come on programmes like this to talk about it. It's Rhys Mogg, Duncan Smith, Redwood. Let's, it's the right wing. Let's talk and about... they will damage Labour communities more than anything that's... Let's talk about the details of what you want. Mm -hmm. How many options? What would be on the ballot paper if you did get a second Brexit vote? Well, I don't, I, I don't go for this idea. I know Justin Greening floated this idea of a three-question referendum. I don't, think that, I don't think that's sensible. I think it... Look, the, the, the straightforward answer at this stage, I couldn't say, because it depends what emerges from this process. For example, if... What, when, do, you, what do you want? I, as long as uh, the option... The government is saying is it has to be a choice. Parliament, this so-called meaningful vote, they will only have a choice between her deal and no deal. That's so anti -democratic. No, Are you saying that no deal wouldn't be an option, then? In I think if her, deal, if her deal gets defeated... No, no deal may well be an option. So, well, I'm just trying to. So, it's no deal. Or if she gets, I think, name, if, if she gets a deal, I think, I think that probably is the choice that the country faces. But then, and a lot of people will say that actually, you know, Theresa May's deal should be on there. It's the yes, third but to, way. But to, this is what she's trying to do. She's trying to say you've got people like me over here who are kind of, you know, extreme on one side of the argument, even though I think we're moderate and sensible. You've got people over there, the Rees Moggs and Farages, who's, who want no deal. They want a, this clean break. And she's trying to sort of project herself as the thing in the middle. But her plan does not work. This is where these two sides agree. But if she gets the deal through with Brussels, you're saying that if that's defeated in Parliament, it shouldn't be on the ballot paper? Well, I think she can put it to the ballot paper, don't, but, but don't forget, it then still does have to get endorsed by, ratified by Parliament. And it has to get ratified by the 27 part, other parties. But if it's voted for in a referendum, then presumably... I accept that gives it an authority. Yeah, but this is the point. We are in a state of chaos. And all these other issues... Well, it's a little bit chaotic, of. isn't it? Uh, that you're campaigning for people's vote, and yet you can't agree what that people's vote but that's would be. But that's not in our gift. That well, is it, not in our gift because if you're a campaign, then surely it, No, I am it, saying it to you, I think there are probably there are probably three options, and I'm saying to you that there has to be one of the options has to be remain is on the ballot paper. And let me so tell you three you should, there should be three options now. No, I'm not saying I'm saying there are three possible outcomes that I see, but I can't tell you because the chaos is such I don't think any of us can predict what's going to happen. I've just been talking to some of your guests downstairs. None of us can predict what's happening. I'm simply saying what I think yesterday showed is the country is not uniting around any vision of Brexit. There is a desire to take a look at this again. And the idea that it's anti-democratic to let the public 
say whether this is what they voted for. I think it's profoundly anti-democratic not to do that, particularly given the mess, given the cost, given the chaos, given the fact, frankly, we're becoming a bit of a joke around the world, and given the fact the government is doing nothing else, meeting none of the challenges, none of the problems that led to people voting leave in the first place. If, if your People's Vote campaign fails and we do leave the EU in March, what happens then? Do you campaign to rejoin? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I, I think that, look, if she gets a, if she gets a good deal, and MPs vote for that deal, then you just have to say she's got a mandate for that. But there is no good deal available. You, know, you no longer hear them saying this is going to be great for Britain. They just say, we have to do it. There's no sort of why. <clears throat> There's no why at the end of that. And I think it's, it's almost tragic to watch what's going on. I understand why Theresa May feels she has to do this because she became Prime Minister on the back of this referendum. And because millions of people voted for it. And because people voted for it. Referendum. Yes, but the idea that that's a sort of, that opinion never changes. That the will of the people is some sort of static brick that never, ever changes. It is changing. As I say, people like to project that march yesterday as all the kind of usual suspects, the Ramonas. I was bumping into people up and down that march who voted leave. I was bumping into people who didn't vote and wish they had. And I think this, 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 the other point I think it's worth making, I mean, normally, two and a half years, you can get a lot done in a government. What have they actually achieved in two and a half years? And two and a half years, during that time, one and a half million young people have come of age. This is about their future. And I think they should have a say as well. OK, um, just at that point, I think we need to clarify, we've had a, uh, an update from Jeremy Corbyn's office, who was actually meeting the former president of uh, Chile. Yesterday. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, this guy, like uh, Alistair Campbell, he's typical of uh, the non-democratic United Kingdom politician who believes that in order to get his way, you can completely ignore the wishes of the British people who voted knowingly to get out of Europe. There's no question about whether they were voting for this or that or the other. They were voting to leave. Now, the question that's never asked is, if after the next uh, vote, whether it's called a people's vote or a second referendum, should the, re the result be exactly the same or in the other direction, would they accept that? What is the, what is the acceptable uh, voting uh, margin for, uh, now considered to be good enough in the U United Kingdom? Because we must remember, of course, that uh, Theresa May is, is running a, a, a government without a majority. Why was a, a second election not called in that, in that event? Because they managed to get along. She could in, invite the very people who are posing this supposedly insurmountable problem in, in Ireland, this backstop business with the border, which is a load of nonsense. There's absolutely no problem whatsoever involved in this getting out of Europe. Europe is just another country. It's quite possible that when we leave, or when Britain leaves, that uh, they will be able to trade with Europe the same as everybody else trades with Europe. This rubbish that's been put around that we won't be able to import uh, BMWs and Mercedes and Volkswagens and Renaults and Peugeots and Citroën and all this business, it's a load of nonsense. Those people are going to want to sell to Britain and Britain will be able to sell to them in return. And any restrictions that are put on the imports of British goods into Europe will be reciprocated by the British for, as far as French or German goods are concerned. So the obvious answer is that this is all just subterfuge in order to get their way, and their way is to keep Britain in Europe. That's what they want. While at the same time, we've got this business with the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Liam Fox and his friends who are deeply involved with Israel, have been putting the, this notion around that Britain should join the TPP. And Theresa May has uh, already mentioned it in Parliament, quietly, without too much fuss. Well, the TPP shouldn't involve Britain because the trans-Pacific. Britain has no coast with the, with the Pacific, so it's got no reason to be involved in this thing. But 
The difference is that Britain will be the central part of that because if you look at a map, Britain is right in the middle of it. It's well situated to, to, to play a leading role in TPP because TPP is actually controlled from the City of London, as everybody well knows, as are all of these things. So whatever happens to the British, they will not be free. If they stay in Europe, they won't be free. If they get out and join the, the TPP, even, I mean, Trump has refused to go into these things, but it remains to be seen whether he gets his way, because in America, when the president changes, everything changes. So whatever Trump may achieve now can be undone instantly by the next, the next government. In Britain, they're all in, they're all in it together. You've got no choice in Britain. Believe me, you've got no choice whatsoever. Both parties are controlled. The, the, Theresa May, was an, is, had one job for Rothschild in, the, in Rothschild's bank. All right? In France, it's exactly the same thing. Macron only had one job, and that was, in, that was in Rothschild's bank in France. You're all controlled. There's no way out. You just wake up and hope you can get the best deal possible.